This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Agamemnon by Aeschylus. Translated by Robert Browning, 1812 to 1889. Introduction may i be permitted to chat a little by way of recreation at the end of a somewhat toilsome and perhaps fruitless adventure if because of the immense fame of the following tragedy i wish to acquaint myself with it and could only do so by the help of a translator i should require him to be literal at every cost save that of absolute violence to our language the use of certain allowable constructions which happening to be out of daily favour are all the more appropriate to archaic workmanship is no violence but i would be tolerant for once in the case of so immensely famous and original of even a clumsy attempt to furnish me with the very turn of each phrase in as greek a fashion as english will bear while with respect to amplifications and embellishments anything rather than with the good farmer experience that most signal of mortifications to gape for aeschylus and get theognis i should especially decline what may appear to brighten up a passage the employment of a new word for some old one panos or megas or telos with its congeners recurring four times in three lines for though such substitution may be in itself perfectly justifiable yet this exercise of ingenuity ought to be within the competence of the unaided english reader if he likes to show himself ingenious learning greek teaches greek and nothing else certainly not common sense if that have failed to precede the teaching further if i obtained a mere strict bold version of thing by thing or at least word pregnant with thing i should hardly look for an impossible transmission of the reputed magniloquence and sonority of the greek and this with the less regret inasmuch as there is abundant musicality elsewhere but nowhere else than in his poem the ideas of the poet and lastly when presented with these ideas i should expect the result to prove very hard reading indeed if it were meant to resemble aeschylus zumbalein ou padias not easy to understand in the opinion of his stoutest advocate among the ancients while i suppose even modern scholarship sympathizes with that early declaration of the redoubtable Samasius when looking about for an example of the truly obscure for the benefit of those who found obscurity in the sacred books he protested that this particular play leaves them all behind in this respect with their hebraisms syriasms hellenisms and the whole of such bag and baggage note quote, quis ischilum posit affirmare greci nunc scienti magis pater explicabilem quam evangelia aut epistolas apostolicas unus eius agamemnon obscuritate superat quantum est librorum sacrorum cum suis hebraismis et syriasmis et tota hellenisticae superlectili vel faragine salmasius de hellenistica epistle dedicatory and note for over and above the purposed ambiguity of the chorus the text is sadly corrupt probably interpolated and certainly mutilated and no unlearned person enjoys the scholar's privilege of trying his fancy upon each obstacle whenever he comes to a stoppage and effectually clearing the way by suppressing what seems to lie in it all i can say for the present performance is that i have done as i would be done by if need were should anybody without need honour my translation by a comparison with the original i beg him to observe that following no editor exclusively i keep to the earlier readings so long as sense can be made out of them but disregard i hope little of importance in recent criticism so far as i have fallen in with it fortunately the poorest translation provided only it be faithful though it reproduced all the artistic confusion of tenses moods and persons with which the original teems will not only suffice to display what an eloquent friend maintains to be the all in all of poetry the action of the piece but may help to illustrate his assurance that the greeks are the highest models of expression 
the unapproached masters of the grand style their expression is so excellent because it is so admirably kept in its right degree of prominence because it is so simple and so well subordinated because it draws its force directly from the pregnancy of the matter which it conveys not a word wasted not a sentiment capriciously thrown in stroke on stroke note poems by matthew arnold preface End note. so may all happen just a word more on the subject of my spelling in a transcript from the greek and there exclusively greek names and places precisely as does the greek author i began this practice with great innocency of intention some six and thirty years ago lee hunt i remember was accustomed to speak of his gratitude when ignorant of greek to those writers like goldsmith who had obliged him by using english characters so that he might relish for instance the smooth quality of such a phrase as hapalunitai galene he said also that shelley was indignant at firenze having displaced the dante-esque fiorenza and would contemptuously english the intruder firenze i supposed i was doing a simple thing enough but there has been lately much astonishment at os and us i and oi representing the same letters in greek of a sudden however whether in translation or out of it everybody seems committing the offence although the adoption of u for u still presents such difficulty that it is a wonder how we have hitherto escaped euripides but there existed a sturdy briton who ben jonson informs us wrote the life of the emperor anthony pye whom we now acquiesce in as antoninus pius for with time and patience the mulberry leaf becomes satin yet there is on all sides much profession of respect for what keats called voweled greek consonanted one would expect and in a criticism upon a late admirable translation of something of my own it was deplored that in a certain verse corresponding in measure to the fourteenth of the sixth pythian ode neither professor jebb in his greek nor mr browning in his english could emulate that matchlessly musical gonon idon kaliston andron now undoubtedly seeing her son the fairest of men has more sense than sound to boast of but then would not an italian roll us out rimerando il filiolo bellissimo degli uomini whereat pindar no less than professor jebb and mr browning triakiras oichetai tuchon it is recorded in the annals of art that there was once upon a time practising so far north as stockholm a painter and picture cleaner sire of a less unhappy son old muitens and the analyst baron de tesse has not concealed his profound dissatisfaction at old muitens conceit to have himself had something to do with the work of whatever master of eminence might pass through his hands whence it was the baron goes on to deplore that much detriment was done to that excellent piece the recognition of achilles by rubens through the perversity of old muitens who must needs take on him to beautify every nymph of the twenty by the bestowment of a widened eye and an enlarged mouth i at least have left eyes and mouth everywhere as i found them and this conservatism is all that claims praise for what is after all akelustas amistas aoika no neither uncommanded nor unrewarded since it was commanded of me by my venerated friend thomas carlyle and rewarded will it indeed become if i am permitted to dignify it by the prefatory insertion of his dear and noble name r b london october first eighteen seventy seven End of Introduction Agamemnon, Part 1 Persons of the Drama Warder, Chorus of Old Men, Clytemnestra, Talthubias, the Herald, Agamemnon, Cassandra, and Aegisthus Warder, the gods I ask deliverance from these labors, watch of a year's length whereby slumbering through it on the atreides roofs on elbow dog-like i know of nightly star groups the assemblage and those that bring to men winter and summer bright dynasts as they pride them in the ether stars when they wither and the uprisings of them and now on ward i wait the torch's token the glow of fire shall bring from troy a message and word of capture 
so prevails audacious the man's way planning hoping heart of woman but when i driven from night rest dew drenched hold to this couch of mine not looked upon by visions since fear instead of sleep still stands beside me so as that fast i fix in sleep no eyelids and when to sing or chirp a tune i fancy for slumber such song remedy infusing i wail then for this house's fortune groaning not as of old after the best ways governed now lucky be deliverance from these labours at good news the appearing dusky fire o oh, hail thou lamp of night a day-long lightness revealing and of dances the ordainment hallo hallo to agamemnon's wife i show by shouting that from bed starting up at once in the household joyous acclaim good omen to this torch blaze she send aloft if haply ilion's city be taken as the beacon boasts announcing i and for me myself will dance a prelude for that my master's dice drop right i'll reckon since thrice six has it shown to me the signal well may it hap that as he comes the loved hand of the household's lord i may sustain with this hand as for the rest i'm mute on tongue a big ox is trodden yet this house if voice it takes should most plain would speak so willing i myself speak to those who know to who know not i'm blankness chorus the tenth year this since priamos's great match king menelaus agamemnon king the strenuous yoke pair of the atreides honour two throned two sceptred whereof zeus was donor did from this land the aid the armament dispatch the thousand sailored force of argives clamouring ares from out the indignant breast as fling passion forth vultures which because of grief away as are their young ones with the thief lofty above their brood nests wheel in ring row round and round with oar of either wing lament the bedded chicks lost labour that was love which hearing one above whether apollon pan or zeus that wail sharp piercing bird shriek of the guests who fare housemates with gods in air such an one sends against who these assail what late sense shall not fail of punishing erinus here as there the guardian of the guest zeus the excelling one sends against alexandros either son of atreus for that wife the many husbanded appointing many a tug that tries the limb while the knee plays the prop in dust while shred to morsels lies the spear shaft in those grim marriage prolusions when their fury wed danaoi and troas both alike all said things are where things are and as fate has willed so shall they be fulfilled not gently grieving not just doling out the drops of expiation no nor tears distilled shall he we know of bring the hard about to soft that intense ire at those mock rites unsanctified by fire but we pay not here through our flesh age weighed left out from who gave aid in that day we remain staying on staves a strength the equal of a child's at length for when young marrow in the breast doth reign that's the old man's match ares out of place in either but in oldest age's case foliage a-fading why he wends his way on three feet and no stronger than a child wanders about gone wild a dream in day but thou tyndarius's daughter clytemnestra queen what need what new what having heard or seen by what announcements tidings everywhere settest thou round about the sacrifice a flare for of all gods the city swaying those supernal those infernal those of the fields those of the marts obeying the altars blaze with gifts and here and there heaven high the torch uplifts flame medicated with persuasions mild with foul admixture unbeguiled of holy unguent from the clotted chrism brought from the palace safe in its abysm of these things speaking what may be indeed both possible and lawful to concede healer do thou become of this solicitude which now stands plainly forth of evil mood and then but from oblations hope to-day graciously appearing wards away from soul the insatiate care 
the sorrow at my breast devouring there empowered am i to sing the omens what their force which journeying rejoice the potentates for still from god inflates my breast song suasion age born to the business still such war can wage how the fierce bird against the teucris land dispatched with spear and executing hand the achaeans two throned empery or hellas youth two rulers with one mind the bird's king to these kings of ships on high the black sort and the sort that's white behind appearing by the palace on the spear throw side in right sky regions visible far and wide devouring a hair creature great with young balked of more racings they as she from whom they sprung ah linus say ah linus song of wail but may the god prevail the prudent army prophet seeing too the atriadi to their tempers knew those feasting on the hair the armament conductors were and thus he spoke explaining signs in view in time this outset takes the town of priamos but all before its towers the people's wealth that was of flocks and herds as sure shall booty sharing thence drain to the dregs away by battle violent only have care lest grudge of any god disturb with cloud the unsullied shine of that great force the curb of troia struck with damp beforehand in the camp for envyingly is the virgin artemis toward her father's flying hounds this house the sacrificers of the piteous and cowering beast brood and all ere the birth she hates the eagle's feast ah linos say ah linos song of wail but may the good prevail thus ready is the beauteous one with help to those small dewdrop things fierce lions whelp an utter loving litter of each brute that roams the mead and therefore makes she suit the fair one for fulfilment to the end of things these signs portend which partly smile indeed but partly scowl the phantasms of the fowl i call Iaeus pion to avert she worked the danaoi hurt by any thwarting waftures long and fast holdings from sail of ships and sacrifice another than the last she for herself precipitate something unlawful feast for no man's lips builder of quarrels with the house cognate having in awe no husband for remains a frightful backward darting in the path wily housekeeping chronicler of wrath that has to punish that old children's fate such things did calchas with abundant gains as well vociferate predictions from the birds in journeying above the abode of either king with these symphonious sing ah linus say ah linus song of wail but may the good prevail zeus whosoe'er he be if that express aught dear to him on whom i call so do i him address i cannot liken out by all admeasurement of powers any but zeus for refuge at such hours if veritably needs i must from off my soul its vague care burthen thrust not whosoever was the great of yore bursting to bloom with bravery all round is in our mouths he was but is no more and who it was that after came to be met the thrice throwing wrestler he is also gone to ground but zeus if any heart and soul that name shouting the triumph praise proclaim complete in judgment shall that man be found zeus who leads onward mortals to be wise appoints that suffering masterfully teach in sleep before the heart of each a woe remembering travail sheds in due discretion ay and melts the unwilling too by what perchance may be a graciousness of gods and force no less as they commanders of the crew assume the awful seat and then the old leader of the achaean fleet disparaging no seer with bated breath to suit misfortune's inrush here what time it laboured that achaean host by stay from sailing every pulse at length emptied of vital strength hard over calchas shore bound current crossed in aulis station while the winds which post from strumon ill delayers famine fraught tempters of man to sail where harbourage is naught spendthrifts of ships and cables turning time to twice the length 
these carded by delay to less and less away the argeians flowery prime and when a remedy more grave and grand than aught before yea for the storm and dearth the prophet to the foremost in command shrieked forth as cause of this adducing artemis so that the atreidae striking staves on earth could not withhold the tear then did the king the elder speak this clear heavy the fate indeed to disobey yet heavy if my child i slay the adornment of my household with the tide of virgin slaughter at the altar side a father's hands defiling which the way without its evil say how shall i turn fleet fugitive failing of duty to allies since for a wind abating sacrifice and virgin blood tis right they strive nay madden with desire well may it work them this that they require but when he underwent necessity's yoke trace from soul blowing unhallowed change unclean abominable thence another man the audacious mind of him began its wildest range for this it is gives mortals hardihood some vice devising miserable mood of madness and first woe of all the brood the sacrificer of his daughter strange he dared become to expedite woman avenging warfare anchors weighed with such prelusive right prayings and callings father naught they made of these and of the virgin age captain's heart set on war to wage his ministrants vows done the father bade kid-like above the altar swathed in pall take her lift high and have no fear at all head downward and the fair mouth's guard and frontage hold press hard from utterance a curse against the house by dint of bit violence bridling speech and as to ground her saffron vest she shed she smote the sacrificers all and each with arrow sweet and piteous from the eye only sped significant of will to use a word just as in pictures since full many a time in her sire's guest hall by the well-heaped board had she made music lovingly with chime of her chaste voice that unpolluted thing honoured the third libation paean that should bring good fortune to the sire she loved so well what followed those things i nor saw nor tell but calchas arts whate'er they indicate miss of fulfilment never it is fate true justice makes in sufferers a desire to know the future woe preponderate but here before is need to that farewell and welcome tis the same indeed as grief beforehand clearly part for part conformably to calchas art shall come the event but be they as they may things subsequent what is to do prosperity be tight even as we wish it we the next allied sole guarding barrier of the apian land i am come reverencing power in thee o clytemnestra for tis just we bow to the ruler's wife the male seat man bereaved but if thou having heard good news or none for good news hope dost sacrifice thus wide i would hear gladly art thou mute no grudge clytemnestra good news announcer may as is the byword morn become truly news from night his mother but thou shalt learn joy past all hope of hearing priamus city have the argeoi taken chorus how sayest the word from want of faith escaped me clytemnestra troia the achioi hold do i speak plainly chorus joy overcreeps me calling forth the teardrop clytemnestra right for that glad thou art thine eye convicts thee chorus for what to thee of all this trusty token clytemnestra what's here how else unless the god have cheated chorus haply thou flattering shows of dreams respectest clytemnestra no fancy would i take of soul sleep burthened chorus but has there puffed thee up some unwinged omen clytemnestra as a young maid's my mind thou mockest grossly chorus well at what time was even sacked the city clytemnestra of this same mother night the dawn i tell thee chorus and who of messengers could reach this swiftness clytemnestra 
hephaestus sending a bright blaze from ide beacon did beacon send from fire the poster hitherward ide to the rock hermion of lemnos and a third great torch of the island zeus's seat received in turn the athoan summit and so upsoaring as to stride sea over the strong lamp voyager and all for joyance did the gold glorious splendour any sun like pass on the pine tree to mechistos watch place who did not tardy caught no wits about him by sleep declined his portion of the missive and far the beacon's light on stream eurypos arriving made aware masipios's warders and up they lit in turn played herald onwards kindling with flame a heap of grey old heather and strengthening still the lamp decaying no wise springing over plain asapus full moon fashion effulgent toward the crag of mount Kitharon, roused a new rendering up of fire the escort and light far escort lacked no recognition of the guard as burning more than burnings told you and over lake gorgopis light went leaping and at mount aegiplanktos safe arriving enforced the law to never stint the fire stuff and they send lighting up with ungrudged vigour of flame a huge beard ay the very foreland so as to strike above in burning onward the lookout which commands the straight saronic then did it dart until it reached the outpost mount arachneos here the city's neighbour and then darts to this roof of the atriade this light of ide's fire not unforefathered such are the rules prescribed the flambeau bearers he beats that's first and also last in running such is the proof and token i declare thee my husband having sent me news from troia chorus the gods indeed anon will i pray woman but now these words to hear and sate my wonder thoroughly i am fain if twice thou tell them clytemnestra troia do the achaeoi hold this same day i think a noise no mixture reigns in the city sour wine and unguent pour thou in one vessel standers apart not lovers wouldst thou style them and so of captives and of conquerors part wise the voices are to hear of fortune diverse for those indeed upon the bodies prostrate of husbands brothers children upon parents the old men from a throat that's free no longer shriekingly wail the death doom of their dearest while these the after battle hungry labour which prompts night faring marshals them to breakfast on the town's store according to no billet of sharing but as each drew lot of fortune in the spear captured troic habitations house they already from the frost up ethereal and dews delivered will they luckless creatures without a watch to keep slumber all night through and if they fear the gods the city guarders and the god structures of the conquered country they may not capturers soon in turn be captive but see no prior lust befall the army to sack things sacred by gain cravings vanquished for there needs homeward the return salvation to round the new limb back of the double race-course and guilty to the gods if came the army awakened up the sorrow of those slaughtered might be should no outbursting evils happen but may good beat no turn to see in the balance for many benefits i want the gain of chorus woman like prudent man thou kindly speakest and i thus having heard thy trusty tokens the gods to rightly hail forthwith prepare me for grace that must be paid has crowned our labours o zeus the king and friendly knight of these brave boons bestower thou who didst fling on troia's every tower the o'er-roofing snare that neither great thing might nor any of the young ones overpass captivity's great sweep-net one and all of ate held in thrall i zeus i fear the guest's friend great who was the doer of this and long since bent the bow on alexandros with intent that neither wide o the white nor o'er the stars the foolish dart should light the stroke of zeus they have it as men say this at least from the source track forth we may as he ordained so has he done no said someone 
the gods think fit to care nowise for mortals such as those by whom the good and fair of things denied their touch is trampled but he was profane that they do care has been made plain to offspring of the overbold outbreathing ares greater than is just houses that spill with more than they can hold more than is best for man be man's what must keep harm off so that in himself he finds sufficiency the well endowed of mine for there is no bulwark in man's wealth to him who through a surfeit kicks into the dim and disappearing right's great altar yes it urges him the sad persuasiveness ate's insufferable child that schemes treason beforehand and all cure is vain it is not hidden out it glares again a light dread lamping mischief just as gleams the badness of the bronze through rubbing puddings to the touch black clotted is he judged at once he seeks the boy a flying bird to clutch the insufferable brand setting upon the city of his land whereof not any god hears prayer while him who brought about such evils there that unjust man the god in grapple throws such an one paris goes within the atreides house shamed the guest bored by robbery of the spouse and leaving to her townsmen throngs a spread with shields and spear thrusts of sea armament and bringing ilion in a dowry stead destruction swiftly through the gates she went daring the undarable but many a groan outbroke from prophets of the house as thus they spoke woe woe the house the house and rulers woe the marriage bed and dints a husband's love imprints there she stands silent meets no honour no shame sweetest still to see of things gone long ago and through desire of one across the main a ghost will seem within the house to reign and hateful to the husband is the grace of well-shaped statues from in place of eyes those blanks all aphrodite dies but dream appearing mournful fantasies there they stand bringing grace that's vain for vain tis when brave things one seems to view the fantasy has floated off hands through gone that appearance nowise left to creep on wings the servants in the paths of sleep woes then in household and on hearth are such as these and woes surpassing these by much but not these only everywhere for those who from the land of hellas issued in a band sorrow the heart must bear sits in the home of each conspicuous there many a circumstance at least touches the very breast for those whom any sent away he knows and in the live man's stead armour and ashes reach the house of each for ares gold exchanger for the dead and balance holder in the fight of the spear due weight from ilion sends what moves the tear on tear a charred scrap to the friends filling with well-packed ashes every urn for man that was the soul return and they groan praising much the while now this man as experienced in the strife now that fallen nobly on a slaughtered pile because of not his own another's wife but things there be one barks when no man harks a surreptitious grief that's grudge against the atreidae who first sought the judge but some there round the rampart have in ilian earth each one his grave all fair formed as at birth it hid them what they have and hold the hostile earth and grave with anger goes the city's word and pays a debt by public curse incurred and ever with me as about to hear a something night involved remains my fear since of the many slayers not unwatching are the gods the black erinnes at due periods whoever gains the lot of fortune with no right him by life's strain and stress back again beaten from success they strike blind and among the out of sight for who has got to be avails no might the being praised outrageously is grave for at the eyes of such an one is launched from zeus the thunderstone therefore do i decide for so much and no more prosperity than of his envy passes unespied neither a city sacker would i be nor life myself by others captive see a swift report has gone our city through from fire the good news messenger if true who knows 
or is it not a god-sent lie who is so childish and deprived of sense that having at announcements of the flame thus novel felt his own heart fired thereby he then shall at a change of evidence be worsted just the same it is conspicuous in a woman's nature before its view to take a grace for granted too trustful on her boundary usurpature is swiftly made but swiftly too decayed the glory perishes by woman vaunted clytemnestra soon shall we know of these light-bearing torches and beacons and exchanges fire with fire if they are true indeed or if dream fashion this gladsome light came and deceived our judgment yon herald from the shore i see o'ershadowed with boughs of olive dust mud's thirsty brother close neighbours on his garb thus testify me that neither voiceless nor yet kindling for thee mountain wood flame shall he explain by fire smoke but either tell out more the joyance speaking word contrary to which i ought but love it for may good be to good that's known appendage chorus whoever prays for aught else to this city may he himself reap fruit of his mind's error herald ah my forefather's soil of earth argeian thee in this year's tenth light am i returned to of many broken hopes on one hope chancing for never prayed i in this earth argeian dying to share my part in tomb the dearest now hail thou earth and hail thou also sunlight and zeus the country's lord and king the puthian from bow no longer urging at us arrows enough besides scamandros camest thou adverse now contrary be saviour thou and healer o king apollon and god's conquest granting all i invoke too in my tutelary hermes dear herald herald's veneration and heroes are forth senders friendly once more the army to receive the war spears leavings ah mansions of my monarchs roofs beloved and awful seats and deities sun fronting receive with pomp your monarch long time absent for he comes bringing light in night time to you in common with all these king agamemnon but kindly greet him for clear shows your duty who has dug under troia with the mattock of zeus the avenger whereby plains are outploughed altars unrecognizable in god's shrines and the whole land's seed thoroughly has perished and such a yoke-strap having cast round troia the elder king atreides happy man he comes to be honoured worthiest of what mortals now are nor paris nor the accomplished city outvaunts their deed as more than they are done by for in a suit for rape and theft found guilty he missed of plunder and in one destruction fatherland house and home has mowed to atoms debts the priamidae have paid twice over chorus hail herald from the army of achaeans herald i hail to die will gainsay gods no longer chorus love of this fatherland did exercise thee herald so that i weep at least with joy my eyes full chorus what of this gracious sickness were ye gainers herald how now instructed i this speech shall master chorus for those who loved you back with longing stricken herald this land yearned for the yearning army sayst thou chorus so as to set me off from dark mind groaning herald whence came this ill mind hatred to the army chorus of old i use for mischief's physic silence herald and how the chiefs away did you fear any chorus so that now late thy word much joy were dying herald for well have things been worked out these in much time some of them one might say had luck in falling while some were faulty for who gods excepted goes through the whole time of his life ungrieving for labours would i tell of and bad lodgments narrow deckways ill strewn too what the day's woe we did not groan at getting for our portion as for land things again on went more hatred since birds were ours hard by the foeman's ramparts and out of heaven and from the earth the meadow dews kept a sprinkle an abiding damage of vestures 
making hair a wild beast matting winter too if one told of it bird slaying such as unbearable Idaean's snow brought or heat when waveless on its noontide couches without a wind the sea would slumber falling why must one mourn these o'er and gone is labour o'er and gone is it even to those dead ones so that no more again they mind uprising why must we tell in numbers those deprived ones and the live man be vexed with fate's fresh outbreak rather i bid full farewell to misfortunes for us the left from out the argeian army the gain beats nor does sorrow counterbalance so that tis fitly boasted of this sunlight by us or sea and land the airy flyers troia at last taking the band of argives hang up such trophies to the gods of hellas within their domes new glory to grow ancient such things men having heard must praise the city and army leaders and the grace which wrought them of zeus shall honoured be thou hast my whole word end of part one part two chorus o'ercome by words their sense i do not gainsay for i this breeds youth in the old to learn well but these things most the house and clytemnestra concern tis likely while they make me rich too clytemnestra i shouted long ago indeed for joyance when came that first night messenger of fire proclaiming ilion's capture and dispersion and some one girding me said through fire-bearers persuaded troia to be sacked now thinkest truly the woman's way high to lift heart up by such words i was made seem wit bewildered yet still i sacrificed and female song with a shout one man and other through the city set up congratulating in the god's seats soothing the incense-eating flame right fragrant and now what's more indeed why needst thou tell me i of the king himself shall learn the whole word and as may best be i my revered husband shall hasten as he comes back to receive for what's to a wife sweeter to see than this light her husband by the gods saved back from warfare so as to open gates this tell my husband to come at soonest to his loving city a faithful wife at home may he find coming such an one as he left the dog of the household trusty to him adverse to the ill-minded and in all else the same no signet impress having done harm to in that time's duration i know nor pleasure nor blameworthy converse with any other man more than bronze dippings herald such boast as this of the voracious brimful is not bad for a high-born dame to send forth chorus ay she spoke thus to thee that hast a knowledge from clear interpreters a speech most seemly but speak thou herald menelaus i ask of if he returning back in safety also will come with you this land's beloved chieftain herald there's no way i might say things false and pleasant for friends to reap the fruits of through a long time chorus how then if speaking good things true thou chance on herald for sundered not well hidden things become they the man has vanished from the achaic army he and his ship too i announce no falsehood chorus whether forth putting openly from ilion or did storm wide woe snatch him from the army herald thou hast like topping bowmen touched the target and a long sorrow hast succinctly spoken chorus whether then of him as alive or dead man was the report by other sailors brooded herald nobody knows so as to tell out clearly excepting helios who sustains earth's nature chorus how sayest thou then did storm the naval army attack and end by the celestial's anger herald it suits not to defile a day auspicious with ill announcing speech distinct each god's due and when a messenger with gloomy visage to a city bears a fallen host's woes god ward off one popular wound that happens to the city and many sacrificed from many households men scourged by that two-thonged whip ares loves so double spear-headed curse bloody yoke couple of woes like these doubtless whoe'er comes waited 
him does it suit to sing the arene's paean but who of matters saved a glad news bringer comes to a city in good estate rejoicing how shall i mix good things with evil telling of storm against the achaioi urged by god's wrath for they swore league being arch foes before that fire and the sea and plighted troth approved they destroying the unhappy argeian army at night began the bad wave outbreak evils for ships against each other thracian breezes shattered and these butted at in a fury by storm and typhoon with surge rain resounding off they went vanished through a bad herd's whirling and when returned the brilliant light of helios we view the aegean sea on flower with corpses of men achaean and with naval ravage but us indeed and ship unhurt in the hull too either some one outstole us or outprayed us some god no man it was the tiller touching and fortune's saviour willing on our ship sat so as it neither had in harbour wave surge nor ran aground against a shore all rocky and then the water hades having fled from in the white day not trusting to our fortune we chewed the cud in thoughts this novel sorrow or the army labouring and badly pounded and now of them if any one is breathing they talk of us as having perished why not and we that they the same fate have imagine may it be for the best menelaus then foremost and specially to come expect thou if that is any ray of the sun reports him living and seeing too by zeus's contrivings not yet disposed to quite destroy the lineage some hope is he shall come again to household having heard such things know thou truth art hearing chorus who may he have been that named thus holy with exactitude was he some one whom we see not by forecastings of the future guiding tongue in happy mood her with battle for a bridegroom on all sides contention wooed helena since mark the suture ship's hell man's hell city's hell from the delicately pompous curtains that pavilion well forth by favour of the gale of earth-born zephyros did she sail many shield-bearers leaders of the pack sailed too upon their track theirs who had directed oar then visible no more to simois leaf luxuriant shore for sake of strife all gore to ilian wrath fulfilling her intent this marriage care the rightly named so sent in after time for the table's abuse and that of the hearth partaker zeus bringing to punishment those who honoured with noisy throat the honour of the bride the hymenaeal note which did the kinsfolk then to singing urge but learning a new hymn for that which was the ancient city of priamus groans probably a great and general dirge denominating paris the man that miserably marries she who all the while before a life that was a general dirge for citizens unhappy slaughter bore and thus a man by no milk's help within his household reared a lion's whelp that loved the teat in life's first festal stage gentle as yet a true child lover and to men of age a thing whereat pride warms and oft he had it in his arms like any new-born babe bright-faced to hand wagging its tail at belly's strict command but in due time upgrown the custom of progenitors was shown for thanks for sustenance repaying with ravage of sheep slaughtered it made unbidden feast with blood the house was watered to household woe there was no staying great mischief many slaying from god it was some priest of ate in the house by nurture thus increased at first then to the city of ilion went a soul as i might say a windless calm wealth quiet ornament and eyes dart bearing balm love's spirit biting flower but from the true course bending she brought about of marriage bitter ending ill resident ill mate in power passing to the primidae by sending of hospitable zeus arenas for a bride to make brides mourn her dower spoken long ago was the ancient saying still among mortals staying man's great prosperity at height of rise engenders offspring nor unchilded dies and from good fortune to such families buds forth insatiate woe 
whereas distinct from any of my own mind i am for tis the unholy deed begets the many resembling each its dam of households that correctly estimate ever a beauteous child is born of fate but ancient arrogance delights to generate arrogance young and strong mid mortal sorrow or now and then when comes the appointed morrow and she bears young satiety and fiend with whom nor fight nor war can be unholy daring twin black curses within the household children like their nurses but justice shines in smoke-grimed habitations and honours the well-omened life while gold besprinkled stations where the hand's filth is rife with backward turning eyes leaving to holy seats she hies not worshipping the power of wealth stamped with applause by stealth and to its end directs each thing begun approach then my monarch of troia the sacker of atreus the son how ought i address thee how ought i revere thee nor yet overhitting nor yet underbending the grace that is fitting many of mortals hasten to honour the seeming to be passing by justice and with the ill faring to groan as he groans all are free but no bite of the sorrow their liver has reached to they say with a joyful one outside on each two as they force to a smile smileless faces but whoever is good at distinguishing races in sheep of his flock it is not for the eyes of a man to escape such a shepherd's surprise as they seem from a well-wishing mind in watery friendship to fawn and be kind thou to me then indeed sending an army for helena's sake i will not conceal it wast oh by no help of the muses depicted not well of thy midriff the rudder directing convicted of bringing a boldness they did not desire to the men with existence at stake but now from no outside of mind nor unlovingly gracious thou art to those who have ended the labour fulfilling their part and in time shalt thou know by inquiry instructed who of citizens justly and who not to purpose the city conducted agamemnon first indeed argos and the gods the local tis right addressing those with me the partners in this return and right things done the city of priamos gods who from no tongue hearing the rights of the cause for ilion's fate man slaughterous into the bloody vase not oscillating put the vote pebbles while of the rival vessel hope rose up to the lip edge filled it was not by smoke the captured city is still conspicuous ate's burnt offerings live and dying with them the ash sends forth the fulsome blasts of riches of these things to the gods grace many mindful tis right i render since both nets outrageous we built them round with and for sake of woman it did the city to dust the argeian monster the horses nestling the shield-bearing people that made a leap at setting of the pleiads and vaulting o'er the tower the raw flesh feeding lion licked up his fill of blood tyrannic i to the gods indeed prolong this preface but as for thy thought i remember hearing i say the same and thou co-pleader hast me since few of men this faculty is born with their friends successful without grudge to honour for moody on the heart a poison seated its burthen doubles to who gain the sickness by his own griefs he is himself made heavy and out-of-door prosperity seeing groans at knowing i'd call for well have i experienced fellowship's mirror phantom of a shadow those seeming to be mighty gracious to me while just odysseus he who sailed not willing when joined on was to me the ready trace horse this of him whether dead or whether living i say for other city and god's concernment appointing common courts in full assemblage we will consult and as for what holds seemly how it may lasting stay well must be counselled while what has need of medicine paeonian we either burning or else cutting kindly will make endeavour pain to turn from sickness and now into the domes and homes by altar going i to the gods first raise the right hand they who far sending back again have brought me and victory since she followed fixed remain she clytemnestra men citizens argeians here my worships 
i shall not shame me consort loving manners to tell before you for in time there dies off the diffidence from people not from others learning i of myself will tell the hard life i bore so long as this man was neath ilion first for a woman from the male divided to sit at home alone is monstrous evil hearing the many rumours back revenging and for now this to come now that bring after woe and still worse woe bawling in the household and truly if so many wounds had chanced on my husband here as homeward used to dribble report he's pierced more than a net to speak of while were he dying as the words abounded a triple-bodied geryon the second plenty above for loads below i count not of earth a three-share cloak he'd boast of taking once only dying in each several figure because of such like rumours back revenging many the halters from my neck above head others then i loosed loosed from neck by main force from this cause sure the boy stands not beside me possessor of our troth plights thine and mine too as aught orestes be not thou astonished for him brings up our well-disposed guest captive strophios the phocian ills that told on both sides to me predicting both of thee neath ilion the danger and if anarchy's mob uproar thy counsel should o'erthrow since it is born with mortals who e'er has fallen the more to kick him such an excuse i think no cunning carries as for myself why of my wails the rushing fountains are dried up not in them a drop more and in my late to bed eyes damage have i bewailing what concerned thee those torch holdings for ever unattended to in dreams why beneath the light wing beats of the gnat i woke up as he went buzzing sorrows that concern thee seeing that filled more than their fellow sleep time now all this having suffered from soul grief free i would style this man here the dog of the stables the saviour forestay of the ship the high roof's ground prop son soul begotten to his father i land appearing to the sailors past hope loveliest day to see after a tempest to the wayfaring one athirst a wellspring the joy in short of scaping all that's fatal i judge him worth addresses such as these are envy stand off for many those old evils we underwent and now to me dear headship dismount thou from this car not earthward setting the foot of thine o king that's ilian spoiler slave maids why tarry who's the task allotted the soil of the road to strew with carpet spreadings immediately be purple strewn the pathway so that to home unhoped may lead him justice as for the rest care shall by no sleep conquered dispose things justly gods to aid appointed agamemnon offspring of leda of my household warder suitably to my absence hast thou spoken for long the speech thou didst outstretch but aptly to praise from others ought to go this favour and for the rest not me in woman's fashion mollify nor as mode of barbarous man is to me gape forth a groundward falling clamour nor strewing it with garments make my passage envied god sure with these behooves us honour but for a mortal on these varied beauties to walk to me indeed is nowise fear free i say as man not god to me do homage apart from footmats both in varied vestures renown is loud and not to lose one's senses god's greatest gift behooves us him call happy who life has brought to end in loved well-being of all things i might manage thus brave man i clytemnestra come now this say nor feign a feeling to me agamemnon with feeling no indeed i do not tamper clytemnestra vowedst thou to the gods in fear to act thus agamemnon if any i well knew resolve i outspoke clytemnestra what thinks thou priamos had done thus victor agamemnon on varied vests i do think he had passaged clytemnestra then do not struck with awe at human censure agamemnon well popular mob outcry much avails too clytemnestra ay 
but the unenvied is not the much valued agamemnon sure tis no woman's part to long for battle clytemnestra why to the prosperous even suits a beating agamemnon what thou this beating us in war dost prize too clytemnestra persuade thee power for once grant me and willing agamemnon but if this seem so to thee shoes let some one loose under quick foot serviceable carriage and me on these sea products walking may no grudge from a distance from the god's eye strike at for great shame were my strument spoiling riches spoiling with feet and silver purchased textures of these things thus then but this female stranger tenderly take inside who conquers mildly god from afar benignantly regardeth for willing no one wears a yoke that's servile and she of many valuables outpicked the flower the army's gift myself has followed so since to hear thee i am brought about thus i go into the palace purples treading clytemnestra there is the sea and what man shall exhaust it feeding much purples worth its weight in silver dye ever fresh and fresh our garments tincture at home such wealth king we begin by god's help with having and to lack the household knows not of many garments had i vowed a treading in oracles if four enjoin the household of this dear soul the safe return price scheming for root existing foliage goes up houses shadow or spreading against sirius's dog star and thou returning to the hearth domestic warmth yea in winter dost thou show returning and when too zeus works from the green gripe acrid wine then already cool in houses cometh the perfect man his home perambulating zeus zeus perfecter these my prayers perfect thou thy care be yea of things thou mayst make perfect chorus wherefore to me this fear groundedly stationed here fronting my heart the portent watcher flits she wherefore should prophet play the uncalled unpaid lay nor having spat forth fear like bad dreams sits she on the mind's throne beloved well suasive boldness for time since by a throw of all the hands the boat's stern cables touch the sands has passed from youth to oldness when under ilion rush the ship-borne bands and from my eyes i learn being myself my witness their return yet all the same without a liar my soul itself its teacher too chants from within arenus's dirge not having now the whole of hope's dear boldness nor my inward sin the heart that's rolled in whirls against the mind justly presageful of a fate behind but i pray things false from my hope may fall into the fate that's not fulfilled at all especially at least of health that's great the terms insatiable for its weight a neighbour with a common wall between ever will sickness lean and destiny her course pursuing straight has struck man's ship against a reef unseen now when a portion rather than the treasure fear casts from sling with peril in right measure it has not sunk the universal freight with misery freighted over full nor has fear whelmed the hull then too the gift of zeus two-handedly profuse even from the furrows yield for yearly use has done away with famine the disease but blood of man to earth once falling deadly black in times ere these who may by singing spells call back zeus had not else stopped one who rightly knew the way to bring the dead again but did not an appointed fate constrain the fate from gods to bear no more than do my heart outstripping what tongue utters would have all out which now in darkness mutters moodily grieved nor ever hopes to find how she a word in season may unwind from out the enkindling mind clytemnestra take thyself in thou too i say cassandra since zeus not angrily in household place thee partaker of hand sprinklings with the many slaves stationed his the owner's altar close to descend from out this car nor be high-minded and truly they do say alcmene's child once bore being sold slaves barley bred his living 
if then necessity of this lot or balance much is the favour of old wealthy masters for those who never hoping made fine harvest are harsh to slaves in all things beyond measure thou hast with us such usage as law warrants chorus to thee it was she paused plain speech from speaking being inside the fatal nets obeying thou mayst obey but thou mayst disobey too clytemnestra why if she is not in the swallow's fashion an unknown and barbaric voice possessed of i with speech speaking in mind scope persuade her chorus follow the best as things now stand she speaks of obey thou leaving this thy car enthronement clytemnestra well with this thing at door for me no leisure to waste time as concerns the hearth mid navelled already stand the sheep for fireside slaying by those who never hope to have such favour if thou then aught of this wilt do delay not but if thou being witless takes no word in speak thou instead of voice with hand as cars do chorus she seems a plain interpreter in need of the stranger and her way a beast new captured clytemnestra why she is mad sure hears her own bad senses who while she comes leaving a town new captured yet knows not how to bear the bit of the bridle before she has outfrothed her bloody fierceness not i throwing away more words will shame be chorus but i for i compassionate will chafe not come o unhappy one this car vacating yielding to this necessity prove yoke's use cassandra o totoi god's earth apollon apollon chorus why didst thou o totoi concerning loxias since he is none such as to suit a mourner cassandra o totoi god's earth apollon apollon chorus ill boding here again the god invoked she no wise empowered in woes to stand by helpful cassandra apollon apollon guard of the ways my destroyer thou hast quite the second time destroyed me chorus to prophesy she seems of her own evils remains the god gift to the slave soul present cassandra apollon apollon guard of the ways my destroyer ha whither hast thou led me to what roof now chorus to the atreides roof if this thou know'st not i tell it thee nor this wilt thou call falsehood cassandra how how god hated then of many a crime it knew self-slaying evils halters too man's shambles blood besprinkler of the ground chorus she seems to be good-nosed the stranger dog-like she snuffs indeed the victim she will find there cassandra how how by the witnesses here i am certain now these children bewailing their slaughters flesh dressed in the fire and devoured by their sire chorus ay we have heard of thy soothsaying glory doubtless but prophets none are we in scent of cassandra ah gods whatever does she meditate what this new anguish great great in the house here she meditates ill such as friends cannot bear cannot cure it and still off stands all resistance afar in the distance chorus of these i witless am these prophesyings but those i knew for the whole city brutes them cassandra ah unhappy one this thou consummatest thy husband thy bed's common guest in the bath having brightened how shall i declare consummation it soon will be there for hand after hand she outstretches at life as she reaches chorus nor yet i've gone with thee for after riddles now in blind oracles i feel resourceless cassandra eh eh papai papai what this i espy some net of hades undoubtedly nay rather the snare is she who has share in his bed who takes part in the murder there but may a revolt unceasing assault on the race raise a shout sacrificial about a victim by stoning for murder atoning chorus 
what this erinus which in the house thou callest to raise her cry not me thy word enlightens to my heart has run a drop of the crocus dye which makes for those on earth by the spear that lie a common close with life's descending sun swift is the curse begun cassandra how how see see quick keep the bull from the cow in the vesture she catching him strikes him now with the black horn trick and he falls in the watery vase of the craft killing cauldron i tell thee the case chorus i would not boast to be a topping critic of oracles but to some sort of evil i liken these from oracles what good speech to mortals beside is sent it comes of their evils these arts word abounding that sing the event bring the fear tis their office to teach cassandra ah me ah me of me unhappy evil destined fortunes for i bewail my proper woe as mine with his all into one i throw why hast thou hither me unhappy brought unless that i should die with him for naught what else was sought chorus thou art some mind-mazed creature god possessed and all about thyself dost wail a lay no lay like some brown nightingale insatiable of noise who well away from her unhappy breast keeps moaning itus itus and his life with evils flourishing on each side rife cassandra ah me ah me the fate of the nightingale the clear resounder for a body wing born have the gods cast round her and sweet existence from misfortunes free but for myself remains a sundering with spear the two-edged thing chorus whence hast thou this onrushing god involving pain and spasms in vain for things that terrify with changing unintelligible cry thou strikest up in tune yet all the while after that orthian style whence hast thou limits to the oracular road that evils bode cassandra ah me the nuptials the nuptials of paris the deadly to friends ah me of scamandros the draught paternal there once to these ends on thy banks was i brought the unhappy and now by cocytus and acheron's shore i shall soon be it seems these my oracles singing once more chorus why this word plain too much hast thou uttered a babe might learn of such i am struck with a bloody bite here under at the fate woe reeking of thee shrill shrieking to me who hear a wonder cassandra ah me the toils the toils of the city the holy destroyed ah pity of the sacrificings my father made in the rampart's aid much slaughter of grass-fed flocks that afforded no cure that the city should not as it does now the burthen endure but i with the soul on fire soon to the earth shall cast me and expire chorus two things on the former consequent again hast thou given vent and tis some evil meaning fiend dost move thee heavily falling from above thee to melodize thy sorrows else in singing calamitous death bringing and of all this the end i am without resource to apprehend cassandra well then the oracle from veils no longer shall be out looking like a bride new married but bright it seems against the sun's uprisings breathing to penetrate thee so as wave-like to wash against the rays a woe much greater than this i will no longer teach by riddles and witness running with me that of evils done long ago i nosing track the footstep for this same roof here never quits a chorus one voiced not well tuned since no well it utters and truly having drunk to get more courage man's blood the comos keeps within the household hard to be sent outside of sister furies they hymn their hymn within the house close sitting the first beginning curse in turn spit forth at the brother's bed to him who spurned it hostile have i missed aught or hit i like a bowman false prophet am i knock at doors a babbler henceforward witness swearing now i know not by others word the old sins of this household
End of part two. Part three. Chorus. And how should oath, bond honorably binding, become thy cure? No less I wonder at thee, that thou beyond sea reared a strange tongued city shouldst hit at speaking just as if thou stoodst by. Cassandra. Prophet Apollon put me in this office. Chorus. What, even though a god with longing smitten? Cassandra. At first, indeed, shame was to me to say this. Chorus. For more relaxed grows every one who fares well. Cassandra. But he was athlete to me, huge grace breathing. Chorus. Well, to the work of children went ye law's way. Cassandra. Having consented, Loxias I played false to. Chorus. Already when the wits inspired possessed of? Cassandra. Already townsmen all their woes I foretold. Chorus. How wast thou then unhurt by Loxias' anger? Cassandra. I know one aught persuaded when I sinned thus. Chorus. To us at least now sooth to say thou seemest. Cassandra. Hello, hello, ah, evils. Again straightforward foresight's fearful labor whirls me, distracting with prelusive last lays. Behold ye those there in the household seated, young ones, of dreams approaching to the figures, children as if they died by their beloveds, hands they have filled with flesh, the meal domestic, and trails and vitals both, most piteous burthen, plain they are holding, which their father tasted, for this, I say, plans punishment, a certain lion, ignoble, on the bed that wallows, houseguard, ah, me, to the returning master, mine, since to bear the slavish yoke behooves me, the ship's commander, Ilion's desolator, knows not what things the tongue of the lewd she-dog speaking, outspreading, shiny-souled, in fashion of Ate hid, will reach to by ill fortune, such things she dares, the female, the male slayer. She is, how calling her the hateful bite-beast, may I hit the mark? Some amphisbina, scullah housing in rocks of mariners the mischief, reveling Hades' mother, curse no truce with, breathing at friends. How piously she shouted, the all-courageous as at turn of battle. She seems to joy at the back bringing safety. Of this, too, if I not persuade, all's one. Why? What is to be will come, and soon thou, present, true prophet all too much, wilt pitying style me. Chorus. Thyestes' feast, indeed, on flesh of children, I went with, and I shuddered. Fear, too, holds me, listing what's true as life, nowise out-imaged. Cassandra. I say, thou Agamemnon's fate shall look on. Chorus. Speak good words, O unhappy, set mouth sleeping cassandra but paion stands in no stead to the speech here chorus nay if the thing be near but never be it cassandra thou indeed prayest they to kill are busy chorus of what man is it ministered this sorrow cassandra there again wide thou lookst of my foretellings chorus for the fulfiller's scheme i have not gone with cassandra and yet too well I know the speech Hellenic. Chorus. For Pythian oracles thy speech, and hard too. Cassandra. Papai, what fire this, and it comes upon me. Ototoi, Lucaeon, Apollon, ah, me, me. She the two-footed lioness that sleeps with the wolf, in absence of the generous lion, kills me, the unhappy one, and as a poison brewing to put my price to in the anger, she vows against her mate this weapon wedding to pay him back the bringing me with slaughter. Why keep I then these things to make me laughed at, both wands and round my neck oracular fillets? Thee at least, ere my own fate, will I ruin. Go to perdition falling. Boons exchange we. Some other Ate in my stead make wealthy. See there, himself, Apollon stripping from me the oracular garment having looked upon me even in these adornments laughed by friends at as good as foes in the balance weighed and vainly for called crazed strollers i had been gypsy beggar unhappy starved to death i bore it 
and now the prophet prophet me undoing has led away to these so deadly fortunes instead of my sire's altar waits the hack block she struck with first warm bloody sacrificing yet nowise unavenged of gods will death be for there shall come another our avenger the mother slaying scion father's doomsman fugitive wanderer from this land in exile back shall he come for friends copestone these curses for there is sworn a great oath from the gods that him shall bring hither his fallen sire's prostration why make i then like an indweller moaning since at the first i foresaw ilian city suffering as it has suffered and who took it thus by the judgment of the gods are faring i go will suffer will submit to dying but hades gates these same i call i speak to and pray that on an opportune blow chancing without a struggle blood the calm death bringing an easy outflow i this eye may close up chorus oh much unhappy but again much learned woman long hast thou outstretched but if truly thou knowest thine own fate how comes that like to a god-led steer to altar bold thou treadest cassandra there's no avoidance strangers no some time more chorus he last is anyhow by time advantaged cassandra it comes the day i shall by flight gain little chorus but know thou patient art from thy brave spirit cassandra such things hears no one of the happy fortuned chorus but gloriously to die for man is grace sure cassandra ah sire for thee and for thy noble children chorus but what thing is it what fear turns thee backwards cassandra alas alas chorus why this alas if tis no spirit's loathing cassandra slaughter blood dripping does the household smell of chorus how else this scent is of hearth sacrifices cassandra such kind of steam as from a tomb is proper chorus no syrian honour to the house thou speak'st of cassandra but i will go even in the household wailing my fate in agamemnon's life suffice me ah strangers i cry not ah as bird at bush through terror idly to me the dead bear witness this much when for me woman there shall die a woman and for a man ill-wived a man shall perish this hospitality i ask as dying chorus o sufferer thee thy foretold fate i pity cassandra yet once for all to speak a speech i fain am no dirge mine for myself the sun i pray to fronting his last light to my own avengers that from my hateful slayers they exact too pay for the dead slave easy managed hands work chorus alas for mortal matters happy fortuned why any shade would turn them if unhappy by throws the wedding sponge has spoiled the picture and more by much in mortals this i pity the being well to do insatiate a desire of this born with all mortals is nor any is there who well-being forces off a roints from roofs whereat a finger points no more come in exclaiming this man too to take the city of priamus did the celestials give and honoured by the god he homeward came but now if of the former he shall pay the blood back and for those who cease to live dying for death's in turn new punishment he dooms who being mortal would not pray with an unmischievous demon to have been born who would not hearing thus agamemnon ah me i am struck a right aimed stroke within me chorus silence who is it shouts stroke right aimedly a wounded one agamemnon ah me indeed again a second struck by chorus this work seems to me completed by this ah me of the kings but we somehow may together share in solid counsellings chorus one i in the first place my opinion tell you to cite the townsmen by help cry to house here chorus two to me it seems we ought to fall upon them at quickest prove the fact by sword fresh flowing chorus three 
and i of such opinion the partaker vote to do something not to wait the main point chorus four tis plain to see for they prelude as though of a tyranny the signs they gave the city chorus five for we waste time while they this waiting's glory treading to ground allow the hand no slumber chorus six i know not chancing on some plan to tell it tis for the doer to plan of the deed also chorus seven and i am such another since i'm schemeless how to raise up again by words a dead man chorus eight what and protracting life shall we give way thus to the disgracers of our home these rulers chorus nine why tis unbearable but to die is better for death than tyranny is the riper finish chorus ten what by the testifying ah me of him shall we prognosticate the man has perished chorus eleven we must quite know ere speak these things concerning for to conjecture and quite know are two things chorus twelve the same to praise i from all sides abound in clearly to know atreides what he's doing clytemnestra much having been before to purpose spoken the opposite to say i shall not shamed be for how should one to enemies in semblance friends enmity proposing sorrow's net frame enclose a height superior to outleaping to me indeed the struggle of old not mindless of an old victory came with time i grant you i stand where i have struck things once accomplished and so have done and this deny i shall not as that his fate was nor to fly nor ward off a wrap round with no outlet as for fishes i fence about him the rich woe of the garment i strike him twice and in a double ah me he let his limbs go there and to him fallen the third blow add i giving of below ground zeus guardian of the dead the votive favour thus in the mind of him he rages falling and blowing forth a brisk blood spatter strikes me with a dark drop of slaughterous dew rejoicing no less than at the god-given dewy comfort the sown stuff in its birth throws from the calyx since so these things are argives my revered here ye may rejoice if ye rejoice but i boast if it were fit on corpse to pour libation that would be right right over and above too the cup of evils in the house he having filled with such curses himself coming drinks of chorus we wonder at thy tongue since bold mouth truly is she who in such speech boasts o'er her husband clytemnestra ye test me as i were a witless woman but i with heart intrepid to you knowers say and thou if thou wilt or praise or blame me comes to the same this man is agamemnon my husband dead the work of the right hand here i of a just artificer so things are chorus what evil o woman food or drink earth bread or sent from the flowing sea of such having fed didst thou set on thee this sacrifice and popular cries of a curse on thy head off thou hast thrown him off hast cut the man from the city but off from the city thyself shalt be cut to the citizens a hate immense clytemnestra now indeed thou adjudgest exile to me and citizens hate and to have popular curses nothing of this against the man here bringing who no more awe checked than as it were a beast's fate with sheep abundant in the well-fleeced graze flocks sacrificed his child dearest fruit of travail to me as song spell against threkian blowings not him did it behoove thee hence to banish pollution's penalty but hearing my deeds justicer rough thou art now this i tell thee to threaten thus me one prepared to have thee on like conditions thy hand conquering or me rule but if god the opposite ordain us thou shalt learn late taught certes to be modest chorus greatly intending thou art much mindful too hast thou cried since thy mind with its slaughter outpouring part is frantic that over the eyes a patch of blood with blood to match is plain for a pride yet still bereft of friends thy fate is blow with blow to expiate clytemnestra and this thou hearest of my oaths just warrant 
by who fulfilled things for my daughter justice ate erinus by whose help i slew him not mine the fancy fear will tread my palace so long as on my heart there burns a fire i guess thus as before well caring for me since he to me is shield no small of boldness here does he lie outrager of this female dainty of all the creseids under ilion and she the captive the soothsayer also and couchinate of this man oracle speaker faithful bedfellow i the sailors benches they wore in common nor unpunished did so since he is thus while as for her swan fashion her latest having chanted dying wailing she lies to him a sweetheart me she brought to my beds by nicety the wet of dalliance chorus alas that some fate would come upon us in quickness neither much sickness nor bed-keeping and bare unended sleeping now that subdued is our keeper the kindest of mood having borne for a woman's sake much strife by a woman he withered from life ah me law-breaking helena who won hast many so many souls undone neath troia and now the consummated much memorable curse hast thou made flower forth red with the blood no rains disperse that which was then in the house strife all subduing the woe of a spouse clytemnestra no wise of death the fate burdened by these things supplicate nor on helena turn thy wrath as the man destroyer as she who hath being but one many and many a soul undone of the men the danaoi and wrought immense annoy clytemnestra daimon who fallest upon this household and the double-raced tantalidae a rule minded like theirs displaced thou rulest with me now whose heart thou gallest and on the body like a hateful crow stationed all out of tune his chant to chant does something vaunt now of a truth hast thou set upright thy mouth's opinion naming the sprite the triply gross o'er the race that has dominion for through him it is that eros the carnage liquor in the belly is bred ere ended quite is the elder throw new ichor chorus certainly great of might and heavy of wrath the sprite thou tellest of in the palace woe woe an evil tale of a fate by ate's malice rendered insatiate oh oh king king how shall i beweep thee from friendly soul whatever say thou liest where webs of the spider or sweep thee in impious death life breathing away oh me me this couch not free by a slavish death subdued thou art from the hand by the two-edged dart clytemnestra thou boastest this deed to be mine but leave off styling me the agamemnonian wife for showing himself in sign of the spouse of the corpse thou dost see did the ancient bitter avenging ghosts of atreus savage host pay the man here as price a full groan for the young one's sacrifice chorus that no cause indeed of this killing art thou who shall be witness-bearer how shall he bear it how but the sire's avenging ghost might be in the deed a sharer he is forced on and on by the kin-born flowing of blood black ares to where having gone he shall leave off flowing done at the frozen child's flesh food king king how shall i beweep thee from friendly soul whatever say thou liest where webs of the spider or sweep thee in impious death life breathing away o oh, me me this couch not free by a slavish death subdued thou art from the hand by the two-edged dart clytemnestra no death unfit for the free do i think this man's to be for did not himself a slavish curse to his household decree but the scion of him myself did nurse that much bewailed iphigenia he having done well by and as well nor worse been done too let him not in hades loudly bear himself proudly being by sword destroying death immersed for that sword's punishment himself inflicted first chorus i at a loss am left of a feasible scheme of mind bereft where i may turn for the house is falling 
i fear the bloody crash of the rain that ruins the roof as it bursts amain the warning drop has come to a stop destiny hath justice wet for other deed of hurt on other wet stones yet woe earth earth would thou hast taken me ere i saw the man i see on the pallet bed of the silver-sided bath vase dead who is it shall bury him who sing his dirge can it be true that thou wilt dare the same to do having slain thy husband thine own to make his funeral moan and for the soul of him in place of his mighty deeds a graceless grace to wickedly institute by whom shall the tale of praise o'er the tomb at the godlike man be sent from the truth of his mind as he toils intent clytemnestra it belongs not to thee to declare this object of care by us did he fall down there did he die down there and down no less we will bury him there and not beneath the wails of the household over his death but iphigenia with kindliness his daughter as the case requires facing him full at the rapid flowing passage of groans shall both hands throwing around him kiss that kindest of sires chorus this blame comes in the place of blame hard battle it is to judge each claim he is borne away who bears away and the killer has all to pay and this remains while zeus is remaining the doer shall suffer in time for such is ordaining who may cast out of the house its cursed brood the race is to ate glued clytemnestra thou hast gone into this oracle with a true result for me then i will to the diamond of the plesthenidae making an oath with all these things comply hard as they are to bear for the rest going from out this house a guest may he wear some other family to naught with the deaths of kin by kin and keeping a little part of my goods wholly am i contented in having expelled from the royal house these frenzied moods the mutually murderous i guess thus o light propitious of day justice bringing i may say truly now that men's avengers the gods from high of earth behold the sorrows seeing as i have in the spun robes of the erinnes this man here lying sight to me how pleasant his father's hands contrivances repaying for atreus this land's lord of this man father thyestes my own father to speak clearly his brother too being in the rule contested drove forth to exile from both town and household and coming back to the hearth turned a suppliant wretched thyestes found the fate assured him not to die bloodying his paternal threshold just there but hostwise this man's impious father atreus soul keenly more than kindly seeming to joyous hold a flesh day to my father served up a meal the flesh of his own children the feet indeed in the hands top divisions he hid high up in isolated sitting but their unshowing parts in ignorance taking he forthwith eats food as thou seest perdition to the race and then ware of the deed ill omened he shrieked oh falls back vomiting from the carnage and fate on the polypidae past bearing he prays down putting in his curse together the kicking down of the feast that so might perish the race of pleisthenes entire and thence is that it is given thee to see this man prostrate and i was rightly of this slaughter stitch man since me being third from ten with my poor father he drives out being then a babe in swath bands but grown up back again has justice brought me and of this man i got hold being without doors fitting together the whole scheme of ill will so sweet in fine even to die were to me seeing as i have this man in the toils of justice chorus i guess thus arrogance in ills i love not dost thou say willing thou didst kill the man here and alone plot this lamentable slaughter i say thy head in justice will escape not the people's throwing know that stones and curses i guess thus thou such things soundest seated at the lower oarage to those who rule at the ship's mid-bench thou shalt know being old how heavy is teaching to one of the like age bidden be modest but chains and old age and the pangs of fasting stand out before all else in teaching prophets at soul's cure dost not seeing aught see this too 
against goads kick not lest tripped up thou suffer chorus woman thou of him coming new from battle house guard thy husband's bed the while disgracing for the army leader didst thou plan this fate too aegisthus these words too are of groans the prime begetters truly a tongue opposed to orpheus hast thou for he led all things by his voice's grace charm but thou upstirring them by these wild yelpings wilt lead them forced thou wilt appear the tamer chorus so thou shalt be my king then of the argeians who not when for this man his fate thou plannest darest to do this deed thyself the slayer i guess thus for to deceive him was the wife's part certes i was looked after foe i old begotten but out of this man's wealth will I endeavour to rule the citizens, and the no man minder him will I heavily yoke, by no means trace horse a corned up colt, but that bad friend in darkness, famine its housemate, shall behold him gentle. Chorus. Why then, this man here, from a coward spirit, didst not thou slay thyself, but helped a woman, the country's pest, and that of gods in the country, killed him, Orestes, where may he see light now that coming hither back with gracious fortune of both these he may be the all-conquering slayer i guess thus but since this to do thou thinkest and not talk thou soon shalt know up then comrades dear the proper thing to do not distant this chorus up then hilt in hold his sword let every one aright dispose i guess thus ay but i myself too hilt in hold do not refuse to die chorus thou wilt die thou sayest to who accept it we the chance demand clytemnestra no wise o belovedest of men may we do other ills to have reaped away these even is a harvest much to me go both thou and these the old men to the homes appointed each ere ye suffer it behooved one do these things just as we did and if of these troubles there should be enough we may assent by the diamond's heavy heel unfortunately stricken ones so a woman's counsel hath it if one judge it learning worth i guess thus but to think that these at me the idle tongue should thus o'er bloom and throw out such words the diamond's power experimenting on and of modest knowledge missing me the ruler chorus ne'er may this befall argeians wicked man to fawn before i guess thus anyhow in after days will i yes i be at thee yet chorus not if hither should the daimon make orestes straightway come i guess thus oh i know myself that fugitives on hopes are pasture fed chorus do thy deed get fat defiling justice since the power is thine i guess thus know that thou shalt give me satisfaction for this folly's sake chorus boast on bearing thee audacious like a cock his females by clytemnestra have not thou respect for these same idle yelpings i and thou will arrange it ruling o'er this household excellently well end of part three recording by expatriate in bangor maine end of agamemnon by aeschylus translated by robert browning eighteen twelve to eighteen eighty nine